Hello and welcome to Tights TV, it's Neil and today I've got Tom on. Uh, so Tom, welcome mate, glad to that you've been able to join us. Cheers Neil, always a pleasure. Uh, Always, always a pleasure talking to you, mate, because there's some uh, right good content, some good debates and that to be had. Um, so, yeah, quite a bit's happened, players in and arts, uh, pre-season's obvious, so be interesting to get your thoughts on that. Uh, you know, ready for season and fitness levels of players and all. So, over to you, Tom. What, what do you want to start off with, mate? Yeah, well, we were just saying what we um off camera that there's, there's we're getting to that point now where we're just ready for the season, aren't we? We're just ready mm. for it. Uh, and I think there's a lot of a lot of stuff sometimes comes out and you get lots of rumours and you get lots of this, you get lots of that. When we get down to business, they tend to stop a bit, don't they? Yeah. Um, and we tend to get down to business side and you get down to, because so-and-so, you've got people who are in the know and you've got mm. people who will say certain things and put certain things out there. But when the season gets going, that's when, that's business ending it. That's when stuff starts, that's yeah. when stuff starts moving. So... I think I've been really, really impressed about how with how we've we've gone about stuff really because I think I know there's a lot of I know there's a lot of players, um a lot of people will be disappointed with some of the players that are leaving, but it's all stuff that was said. We knew what were happening, we were told what were happening, they've not done it behind us back, they've not done they've they've got players off the wage bill, they've moved players out and I think I've said it before. There's not one player who I'll be upset to see go. Not because I don't like them, not because I don't think they're very good players, not because I just, like I've said before, I think we need to start again and we need to really build what Duff wants to build and what he wants to build as part of his team. Um, so when you're talking about some of the players like Woodrow, Woodrow carries a lot of baggage for me. Morris carries a bit of baggage. Britain carries all his luggage and more because the way mm. I... I'm really pleased that Britain's gone, if I'm honest. Um, I thought first season, I thought it was going to be outstanding. I thought it was, I thought it was brilliant under Ismail, played to a plan. Um, last season, yeah, he got coached poorly. He was part of a poor team. But I think his mentality was shocking last year. Um, mm. And I think as one of, the more, one of the players who people would look up to, um, I think he was, I think it was shocking, really, really poor. And then I'm reading about him saying, oh, he's been stressed about his move and looking out for this and looking out for that. Well, I was stressed out watching him last year. Do you know what I mean? For yeah. however yeah. long. So it just it, it just infuriated me a bit because I was just thinking to myself that he's he's one of those players. He's That's where um, it brings it all back to me that, that that squad should have done a hell of a lot more, particularly after what they achieved with Ishmael. Mm. Um, and again, Poor coaching, I know that. I know it were poor appointments and all that kind of stuff. But that's why I'm so pleased with how we're going now because he's does he bringing in his own men. He's bringing in people who he thinks can fit into a system. And I can't remember us having that for a long, long time where players have been bought for a reason and they've been brought in to fit what somebody is trying to do from the top. Yeah. So I'm I'm really I'm honestly delighted with how the with how it's shaping up and do you know what? It's a long, long time until the transfer window shuts. I still think there'll be a lot of comings and goings. Yeah. I still think there'll be a lot of stuff going off. So it, how we line up at Plymouth might be very different to how we line up a month down the line. Very true. And it's great points what you said. I mean, it's all about opinions and that and what I've been reading as well is that when Blackburn came in, well, we're interested to show an interest in January for uh, Callum Britton. It's came to light in some uh, media outlets that for the last two weeks, like what you were saying there, he'd been stressing out, but he's always been pushing for a move as well to move away. So if that's the case, then go. Uh, like what you said, you want to play what's going to play for a shirt, Tom. And if you're going to be carrying players as such, if you're not right mentality-wise and we don't want to be in plan what Duff's trying to build, because it is a rebuild job, then move on. Uh, there'll be players out of here, there'll be players identified what's going to fit into a plan, a structure. And it's great to see not only what he's doing on the pitch as in recruitment, but great to see that Martin Devaney, Martin Patterson, he's got his backroom staff, so it's it's like a togetherness. It's a yeah, plan being built, in it, to go forward. He's building it, he's building mm. it. And it, do you know, it's going to take a while. It's going to take a while to do stuff. And I, I just feel I've been really, really fed up this week with and, and last couple of weeks and maybe even a month or so where there's, there's 
bringing club down, a lot of fans bringing the club down and, and being... <laughs> I understand they want the best for the club. I'd never question that. I understand that. But that's not the way to do it by bringing them down. It's like saying, oh, well, we'll accept, accept the first offer or whatever. You've no idea whether we've been accepted first offer or not. You've absolutely no idea. And we've actually come out and said we've had turned down four or five bits for but, a player, haven't we? So. This is it, though, Neil. You've yeah. got... You, you, you can you can go on Twitter and you can go on forums and you can say, well, this has happened, that's happened, and you've no idea, absolutely mm. no idea. We've no idea about ins and outs. We've no idea. I've been listening to that um, podcast. I don't know if you've you've had a go on it. Moment of Truth, it's called. Mm. Uh, mm. And Rotherham, and it's mm. Carl Robinson and Paul Warren. Yeah. So much stuff that they deal with day to day and the emotional side of it and the things that they get chucked their way. There's so many things that we don't know and we don't see. Yeah. And I've seen things like, oh, well, they ain't got they ain't got shirt out yet and they ain't got this person announced and they ain't got this and they ain't got that. And why has this been taking so long to get over the line? And why is this? You've no idea. We've no idea. And it's all speculation. And sometimes I'd rather them do due diligence and get it right. It's like when we had Asselbank and they're saying about, oh, well, they didn't turn up for a Zoom meeting. You've no idea whether that's true mm. or not. It's all stuff. It's all stuff to try and pull the club down. And yes, they've got stuff wrong. And last season, biggest critic because you can't not criticise what happened last year. Mm. But when they've said what they're going to do, and when they've tried to move it forward, and when Dust been given his opportunity to build something, let him build it and let's go with it. Because if we don't, and we don't all pull it the same direction, we'll end up tripping ourselves up. Do you know what I mean? I feel yeah. like we. That we've got to give this an opportunity because you either give an opportunity or you say no, there's no point in me being there we've got to get behind them uh, yeah it's like, whatever you said via, it's like, it, it's agreement because like I said, there's that many unknowns what happens, it's not just like a game on football manager, oh we should have got X amount of millions or we should have got X amount for this we don't know what's happening behind the scenes I mean, for instance, this be Callum Britton what's come out the rumoured to be 1.5 million, sir, and people are saying, "Oh, it's undisclosed and this that other." But again, how, that's that's the role model. How a lot of clubs are going like now, unless you're like a, a Man City or in Premier League. There's a lot of clubs like you know, uh, oh yeah, we spent 50 million on this or other. But what I tend to see as well, would I would I like to see how much a player's gone for? Yeah, to see what's going to club. Is it going to be a, a deal breaker for me? Not really, because I know they've done it for best interest at club, uh, as in they've got whatever money they could do. They've got where I off at wages, plus that player might be on appearance money as well and goal bonus. And there's a, there's an amount of finances behind the scenes what we don't even know about. Plus, how I'm, I'm much is an agent ever got to say, well, my players wanted to go, my clients wanted to go elsewhere. So they could be pushing to move out away for this X amount. So it's a lot of unknowns what we don't know about, isn't it? Yeah, well, I just I just feel like sometimes we, it, 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 fans, some of us wind ourselves up with stuff that we we don't we we don't know the full facts. Do you know what I mean? If you don't mm. know the full facts, you're never going to know the full facts. You're never going to know what's what. But saying stuff as fact, as in, oh, we've accepted first bid and whatever. Don't say stuff as fact unless you know that it's fact. Mm. And I know that sometimes there'll be lies involved. There'll be mistruths. There'll be all kind of stuff where people don't tell the truth from football clubs for whatever reason. But then again, on the other side of it, there's people, there's fans who sometimes I just feel like we just, we've just we we've just got to, particularly with the people involved now, I would rather give them the opportunity and let's, let's do what we say we're going to do and judge them by their actions. Judging by actions. I mean, and, and again, for players what have been coming in, um, I saw a few comments knocking about saying, oh, I come around again, players, what are free agents and this and other. But for me, why not? Luke O'Connell, I think, is a, I think is a right signing. We haven't got the privacy to go out for money and spend yeah. 500, 600,000 pounds on a player. We've got to be prudent with what we've got. Whatever money we're getting in, we've got to like offset for his allegation what we've done. Plus, we've also got to have wages. Granted, we're not going to be on vast amounts of money like what, your other players have been, but you've got to start somewhere, otherwise you're chucking money after money all the time. So for me, Luke O'Connell, Robbie Cundy, Conor McCarthy, Nicky Cadden. I mean, Nicky Cadden had admired some championship. For us to go out and back, attract that kind of player and want to come and actually play football, not like Eddie's had turned and think, oh, I want to be playing at Blackburn Rovers or whatever. I wanted to come in and actually do a job. And what I've seen in him, we want to play football. We wanted to 
uh, buying house in Barnsley area. They want to settle down and play football. I take that all day long, me. Well, You're committed, you want it. Yeah, I think that's part of the that's part of the building the team, though, isn't it, Neil, as well? Yeah. Do you feel like as opposed to just buying somebody off? I think when we had the when we had the fans forum and we had the and does I made the point to you about just signing players off stats mm. alone and stats alone. It's like, well, we've got to get players in who want to be there. We've got to get players in who want to be part of something. We've got to get mm. players in who want to, because we're at that stage now. And we, and you know, we can say, well, we're only bringing in free transfers. We're only bringing in free transfers because we're trying to make up for the absolute shit show last last year. Mm. You know I mean, and that end of the day, that's how it is, isn't it? What went what went last season? As cost us, and now we're having to work within what we've got. And Duff yeah. knew that when he came in, and he was quite yeah. happy to do it. So let's let him do it. And and do you know what? It might be that we get further down the line and we can start to sign players for a bit of money. But there's a lot of free transfer. There's a lot of players who have been out of contract. There's a lot of players. You look at Luke O'Connell. I think it's. I think quite a lot of people have been really impressed with him in mm. friendlies and been impressed with what he's done. The boy can obviously play, mm. so you, do you know what I mean? Let's let's see how they get on before we start saying, "Oh well, they're only free transfers." I don't care whether they're all free transfers. If the if the good if the good transfers and they fit into our system, then bang on, that'll do for me. On about players, just fear. I mean, like you said, it's been well documented as me, but Michael Duff said it is that attacking options. We're looking at all of it pitch to be fair, but attacking options. Would you would you identify certain key areas that we need to strengthen them? I mean, you said that we've got like plenty of time for a transfer window. I think, yeah, we have. I'd still like to see a couple of players come in just to like said, you know what, we've more or less got us a settled eleven plus a decent ban- bench and all with the amount of games coming up. I think I think we're short. I think we're really short at the moment. And I'm but I'm not I'm not panicking or worried about that. I, I think we were always going to be short because mm. of the time frame for where we're at and and actually the situation that we're in. Um, and I'm glad that we're not just signing anybody um, and 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 doing that. Um, I think there's obviously Styles and Ellick um, to go, and that will obviously... You've got different budgets for different situations, I would imagine, um, in terms of if Ellick goes, we can afford to get so-and-so in, or we can afford to get this player in. If Styles goes, we can afford to get this player in. If we're selling for this amount, we can get this player in. And that's that's just the that's just living within your means, isn't it? That's just seeing yeah. what we've got and what we've got. Well, if Hel- Helican Styles are here, that's a transfer fee we've not received, and it's a wage we've not got off books. So it's going to have to be. We might have to be patient. We might have to wait and see what's what. I think we are short. I think we're particularly short up front, um, which will surprise no one because I think most people are on that um, uh, of that opinion. Um, I think we're a bit. I think the rest of the what he's done is he seems to have, in my opinion, he seems to have built from the back to make us strong, solid, um, and knowing that that striker target and that striker target might not be available, he's gone the opposite way and tried mm-hmm. to build it for build it so that we're solid. Um, but it's no, it, it, it's it's no no breaking news to anybody. We we need a, we need another striker. I, I've no problem with signing Norwood. I think that's quite a bit of savvy bit of business because yeah. one year deal at his age um, with an option of another year. I think that's I think that's clever because mm. I mean he's going to give us everything, isn't he? Yeah. Um, yeah. And played at this level, and uh, I've seen you mention a couple of times that the knowledge that he'll impose on others, um, like your marshes and your players like that. I think that'll be invaluable as well something that we've missed a bit some of a, an old red just to look look after him as well in games do you know what i mean because yeah. we're playing big boys league you know what i mean they're not the the, the you've got teams who will come um and something that's going to be really really difficult for us this season um my best mate he's a rotherham fan uh, and he was saying last season that they did quite well in getting early goals but he says that if you don't get an early goal you know and you've got teams who are coming for a draw and they'll battle and they'll make it difficult and they'll make it hard work. There's going to be times where we're going to need a bit of an older head, somebody who's going to, yeah. you know, let's dig in here because we might have to wait till 80th minute. We might have to do it. Do you know what I mean? There's going to be yeah. difficult games against teams that you wouldn't or 
a lot of fans would say, well, we should be beating them. Mm. It's not how it works, I'm afraid. It's not mm. a not a case of, do you know what I mean? It's not a case of just go turn up. They're not all there to have their bellies tickled, are they? they they've come for, they've, okay. they've come for, you know what I mean? They're all fight, yeah. they all fight for the life, don't they? Yeah, I mean, um, and with them being in League One as well, they know what it takes to scrap and fight to get out at League and we, we've come down, we're going to have to wise up to it. Going back to Norwood, a Sheffield United game, amount of movement and advice and back off football we were going to Aidan Marsh when he came and you could tell for here straight away, he knows what to do, get run via, push up, get a bit, telling him on pitch, so what's he doing in training? Again, it's all advice and knowledge. Use it. It's invaluable. Use it. Pick it up. Learn it. You, yeah. You're getting off a season pro here. Would you be then on... I uh, mentioned it to someone about this, about loan players. Would you be happy if a couple of loan players had come in? Bear in mind what happened last season. We had like four, four you know, four uh, loan players come in when we went out. That were it. We'd done. But would you be happy if, if you said, mm, yeah, do you know what? Top championship side or... Uh, you know, yeah. Premier League tech one. I think we should get DK in on loan. What do you reckon? <laughs> <laughs> An X-Red. <laughs> I wish no. I had a pound for every time someone said that. <laughs> no, I, um, no, I think I, I think there is room for, and there is there is there is room for loan signings. There is room for loan signings, and there is room for um, getting them in. But again, I don't think they'll get a loan signing unless they think it, it fits with a yeah. fits with a fits with a plan. Um, you, you, your thing with your loan signing is if, until the dust settles with transfers um, further up. This is why. So when you get all your transfers on the last day, and everyone says, "Why have you been doing your business before?" Well, it's like mm. it's like buying an house. There's a chain, isn't there? Yeah. And there's a there's a there's a case of well, if he goes, you can have him. Well, if he don't go, you not have it. Do you know yeah, what I mean? I so yeah. There might be a case for. Um, for somebody coming in later in the transfer window, um, and there might be a case for um, what I what I'm hoping is that the links that we've had before, you know, we've got Man City players and we've got mm. players like that. I'm hoping that there might be a chance of getting somebody, you know, th that that we could have like that. But I think there's always going to be a case for having loan players because they we've had our fair share of absolute awful loan players, but we've had a few who have really given us impetus. You know what I mean? They've given yeah, us yeah. Uh, when we've needed it as well. You look at, I mean, like Bassi last year, just, we. I mean, I dread to think where we would have been without him, but you, Spark. You, yeah. yeah, you've got, you've got players who, um, they're there to impress out their loan, loan players, particularly mm. young loan players. They're there to try and kind of set the stall out, but, um, yeah, I wouldn't be against. I would never be against um, uh, having a couple of loans in, but it's about getting right one. Really, yeah. is about getting right one. So going up to obviously we're going to be uh, weekend. We've got Plymouth and then Cheltenham, and then we've got uh, Pizza Trophy sandwich in between them kind of thing. Yeah. Would you say that? Uh, would you be looking at of a say probably two month or ten week? Would you be looking over uh, that kind of period to see whereabouts we are? Not panic stations, but you know, yeah. you know, because some will be like, I'm, again, people are going to be watching. Please uh, leave your comments below. Some might be saying, "Oh no, we need to go for a good start, or we need to be looking and give it a bit of patience." For me, I think new manager, new system, new players I just wanted to gel. I think you've got to gauge them over a couple of months and said, "Yeah, do you know what? We're roughly about here. We need to improve on that." I don't think it's going to be panic yeah. stations, is it? Yeah. I, well, I watched um, Luke on uh, yesterday, yeah, uh, yeah, and he was saying, "Gage it after like ten weeks and see where we're at." And he, he's he's right with that, I think, because uh, I know exactly what will happen on Saturday. Hmm. If we win, we'll be winning the league. Yeah. <laughs> if we draw, <laughs> if we draw, we should have won it. And if yeah. we lose, we're going down, and he should be sacked and all. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You, it's, you've anything can happen up first day. Norwich hmm. lost seven one to. Colchester on first day and got from and and won't leave. Yeah, you know? yeah, anything can happen. So we've got to be a little bit wary of that. Um, and like I said, especially especially with your, um, you never know what kind of players you can bring in after a couple of weeks as well. Um, what I would say is that I'd I'd take a point now at Plymouth. I think it'd be a great point because mm. it, it, I think they're a decent side. I think they've got decent players. They know the league. They'll be at home. They'll have um, packed crowd. They'll be looking to, I mean, 
I think it's probably the worst fixture you could have had for the first, first yeah. of the season. But uh, mainly, not only because of the distance, but because of how difficult a place it'll be to go um, and get a result. So I, I, a draw had tech all day. Um, and then you've got your Cheltenham game where people will be expecting to win. But I'm, I don't think it'll play out like that. And I, I think there'll be a couple of bumps in the road. Um, but hopefully, we could be sat here a couple of weeks down the line and we could have six points in bed. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. That's how that's we, we've you've got to be very wary about taking your pre season games in as well. So, like, you, you've got some players who have played who have played really well. Benson showed up, um, mm. and uh, Connell's looked really good. And then you've got you know, you've got players like that, but then you You've got you've you've got to wait and see how it fits into your intense fans in ground, um, all the intensity and all the pressure that comes with that. You've got to see where we go from there, aren't you? Yeah, I'm not too bothered about I'm not too bothered about um, Papa John. I know we've won it before. I know we've done mm. that stuff, but I'm main concern this year is um, for me is it's league. It's we've got to focus on um, having a solid season. I think that's a good way to end it, Maya. Um, like I say, I think we've got to have a solid season, and you know, championship uh, to get back in championships going to be got to be a priority. Um, I think Papa John's will be a good way to like you was in under twenty threes and you in it kind of thing. Um, but like I think what you said, there, Tom, championship to get back in championships that's going to be his main priority, and I think that's what. But I think that's where we all want to be. To be fair, get back up there. Um, and it's to be a good test, I think, for everybody. Uh, manager, his backroom staff, players, what's coming, and us as fans as well. Like you said, Via, a bit earlier on, if we win, we're going to win league. You yeah. Know, if, if we lose, and again, it's it's that mentality of fans as well to get through. Yeah, we want to be win league and all that, but don't get carried away. It's going to be a marathon, not a sprint. We've got it's to, going to be a fair yeah, fit, isn't we? We've got to stick with it. We've got to stick with it, and we've got to stick with it when. We have a Tuesday night game at home to, you know, mm. what we would expect a team to win. There's going to be frustrations and there's going to be difficult stuff, but I'm really positive because of the already the the changes that we've made. So I'm hoping that, um, I'm hoping that we can all, as fans, we can all get behind it. We can all really, do you, do you know what I mean? I think, yeah. I think it'd be really, really good if we could get a positive start because I think that would build momentum as well. Um, but I'm just hoping that if we don't. We don't panic. Yeah, Do you know what I mean? it's a bit of a. I know it's a bit of both that, and I know that you can't have it always. But I think we, whatever happens in the first few games, let's just stick with it and let's let's go with it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, great. I mean, great to have you on, Tom. Uh, don't panic. Patience is key. I think that's it. What all Reds fans are going to, you know, I'd like to hope all Reds fans are going to be doing that is not to panic. Patience is key. Give Duff enough time to get his way over to uh, his standard of football over to players, and I think uh, results will come and get some positive and uh, some some wins back up. Well, uh, three points. Hopefully, we're having a chat in a couple of weeks' time. We've got some points on board, and uh, yeah, and we're all feeling a little bit um, a little bit more relaxed. <laughs> a, a little bit more relaxed. Yeah. Great to have you on, Tom. Uh, appreciate yeah. you taking your time out. Uh, people, please like, subscribe and share. Leave your comments below. Let us know what you'll think. Uh, one thing left to say, you Reds.